Hello folks, one and all, can you believe it? It's here, look at it, it's beautiful, it's real. It is the Louisiana Superdome, which honestly on this channel, we've spent a ton of time in. Uh, Louisiana Monroe's played like two bowl games there. Uh, we have been to the Sugar Bowl there with Northwestern a couple times, and now we're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, we are in Super Bowl uh, 36, playing the St. Louis Rams. Uh, who would actually, in real life, go. Uh, but they would be playing the Patriots from the AFC. But this year, it is us that they are taking on as we managed to beat Denver in the wildcard round, uh, Jacksonville in the divisional round, and, of course, San Diego last week in San Diego in the AFC round to win the AFC championship. So not only do we now have uh, our first slew of playoff wins, uh, for, again, for the first time since 1990, we now have an AFC title win, which is the first time, I think, since probably, or since 89 or 88, I think, is when Cincinnati was last in the Super Bowl, so we go from Super Bowl to Super Bowl, baby. That's just how we do it here in Cincinnati, I guess. So our offense is already cooking up a nice drive here as we get a generous penalty that gets us into St. Louis territory with that run play with Corey Dillon goes nowhere, who had a massive game uh, against the Chargers here. We, we would really like to see another uh, game like that from him uh, or at least another 100-yard receiving game from Peter Warwick, one of the two. But we are facing a third and long situation already here where danger of this drive stalling out as we float out to McGee, and McGee misses the one defender here, and he breaks off for a huge chunk of yardage. He was another receiver who got absolutely busy uh, in the AFC title game. He had like freaking 10 receptions, I swear to God. <laughs> um, but he showed up big. So now Corey Dillon is going to try and show up big himself here. He shakes off a couple tackles and gets brought down generously by the first down marker. But it's essentially goal to go uh, as we only have a couple more yards to go before we are in the orange and black turf uh, that we brought with us to uh, New Orleans for the Super Bowl 36. So second and one now. Kelly Smith is going to hand off to Corey Dillon. And finally he finishes the job as he gets into the end zone. And there you go, Ray the roof baby uh we're gonna need to raise this roof because we're gonna blow the top off when we win this super bowl i'm saying it now i'm calling it now baby i'm calling it now obviously you guys know uh that i know how this video ends so uh that's not gonna be a spoiler uh, just 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 stay tuned and watch i promise it, it'll get entertaining i hope <laughs> uh, but the rams are already cooking on offense because of course they are they have an absolutely stacked offense with kurt warner uh isaac bruce tory holt uh Marshall Falk, I mean, it is the greatest show on turf. That's why they say it. Uh, and Marshall Falk has already kind of given our defense uh, a good bit of fits here. We really don't have a ton of uh, penetration uh, at the D-line, so uh, it's going to be a rough day for our defense if we cannot contain Marshall Falk at all. But our one touchdown uh, in the first quarter is going to be the only points to speak of. Uh, but to start off the second quarter, the Rams are already cooking in our territory, so... We're going to need to lock in on defense. It's second and short. Warner's going to drop back and float this one out to one of the slew, many slew of receivers he has that can help him out. Uh, but we have a ton of angles in the vicinity, and that pass is not connected. So third and short here, we have an opportunity to get the Rams off of the field, and that would be massive if we could do that. Uh, but Marshall Falk has other plans <laughs> as he hurdles a defender and manages to get just enough for that first down. Not a huge game, but uh, it's still going to give the Rams a fresh set of downs here. So first and 10, and we have that run play completely covered as one of our big D tackles, gets into the backfield off the edge, and is able to contain Marshall Falk. So, that's not going to stop the Rams from running the ball again as they go to Cromwell, I believe, uh, or Comwell, uh, and he uh, stumbles off a couple defenders here and picks up a nice handful of yards. So, nice run for him here, and it's now third and six for the Rams. We have another opportunity to end this drive, and Kurt Warner's again going to go to the same fella uh, who just ran the ball, and Newsom is there to break up that pass. And so that's going to bring up fourth down, and the Rams are just going to take their three points and go home. So 7-3 to three now is now your score here in Super Bowl 36 as the Rams burn a ton of time off the clock uh, in this first half. So coming out of the two-minute warning, we have an opportunity here to add some more points before halftime. Uh, we've been a really potent team in the first half so far in the playoffs, uh, and if we can continue that, we might see ourselves win yet another game in the playoffs. The most important one as we get a humongous pickup by Peter Warwick, uh, who finally checks in for today's game. And on the next play, Chris Waller is going to check himself in as he's got himself another massive uh, uh, reception in this postseason here, and this one's going to bring them, bring us inside the red zone here. So with just a minute left to go, we're going to go with Gross, the fullback, on the ground. He's got a nice little hole up the middle here, but uh, it closes pretty quick, uh, but he still gets about four yards on the carry. So second and six here with just a minute left to go. 
We have uh, a prime position here. Then we're going to go with Gross again on the ground. He hurdles a defender on the ground who's pancaked, uh, and he gets close to the first down marker. Uh, we're going to blow a time out here as we're trying to get uh, ever so closely here and, and get hopefully six points uh, in this first half. So on third and inches, 56 seconds left to go. We're going to pitch it to Cordell on the outside, and the Rams defense comes up big. They have that play completely covered, and there you see the split already. Marshall Falk's already been a lot more disruptive uh, on the ground than Corey Dillon has. We really need him to turn that around <laughs> in the second half at least. But John Green is going to uh, do us some favors here and knock home yet again another field goal in this postseason. He's been really helpful for us. I think the only miss he had was uh, in the divisional game against the Jaguars, but uh, that field goal is going to give us a seven-point lead over the Rams here heading into the second quarter, I mean second half, and that is not nearly enough points uh, to keep this Rams offense at bay, so we're going to need to stay pretty efficient all game long, kind of like we were against San Diego, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if we have it in us, so uh, the Rams are already cooking here right at midfield. They're on that NFL logo here. They're going to go with Marshall Falk on the ground again, and he cannot pick up the first down, but they're getting ever so closer here, and now it's third and two, and uh, in I formation again, are the Rams going to maybe attempt to run it for the third straight time? Possibly. They, they appear to be uh, posed to do so, but Warner's going to keep the ball. We we have some pressure off the edges, and uh, he throws it to an open receiver who I guess didn't have his hands with him. They were left on the bench. He did not have them attached to him at the time. So uh, it is going to be a punt for the Rams, and there is a yellow hanky on the field. And that one is going to bounce uh, into the end zone for a touchback. But hold on, we have a penalty, and it is an offside as our rookie Ilko, our rookie defensive tackle, commits a major penalty in the second half here because the Rams were definitely within five yards. So that's going to give them a fresh set of downs in our territory. That was a huge mental mistake by Ilko. We cannot afford to have stuff like that happen, uh, especially in this game, man. And so the Rams now have a new lease on life on this offensive drive here. It is. Uh, it is dangerous for this defense. We we need all we can we need all the opportunities we can get here. And if we're giving the Rams opportunities, it's not going to help out. So so far, Achilles Smith hasn't done anything crazy like that. Our defense is the one kind of screwing up. As Kurt Warner finally finds Tory Holt deep down the field, and uh, yeah, it's the first time we're calling his name today. We've been fortunate that they haven't been gashing us through the air like that. Uh, but uh, or is it Hans Akeem? Is this before Tory Holt? Oh man, that might be Hans Akeem. Wow. Excuse me, excuse my ignorance heading into Super Bowl 36, uh, which, which was, what, 22 years ago at this point? Uh, I was I was uh, a child, a small child, so bear with me here as the Rams now have an opportunity in the red zone here to add a touchdown, and they float it out again to Hakeem, who hauls it in, but he is well out, out of bounds. So it's going to be third and six for the Rams. If we can force three points, that would be an absolute blessing. Kurt Warner steps up, and this time he does find an open Tory hole. There he is. He's right there. I got the numbers mixed up, <laughs> but there he is. No Isaac Bruce, but we do have Akeem and Torrey Holt. So the third quarter is coming to an end, and it is a tie ball game, ladies and germs. The Rams already have another opportunity with the football. Kurt Warner takes about seven eons to find an open receiver, and it pays off because he finds the open man. Uh, that's a brand new receiver that we're calling. I think that's Pro Holt, right? Is that is that who that is? I, you're really testing my knowledge in the Super Bowl. I apologize. So first and ten again in Cincinnati territory, and they're going to go with Marshall Falk, who's got all the space he needs, and he can shake off a couple tackles, and he does just that uh, and picks up about 15 to 20 yards on the ground. We are just getting absolutely gashed by that man. Uh, we have no answer for Marshall Falk. So on first and ten, it is another uh, handoff to Marshall Falk, and I think he had probably another hole again, but he just gets tripped up. And there you see Corey Dillon is an absolutely nothing since they flashed that graphic earlier in the game. I mean, we were just getting nothing from our running game. There you see, 27 to 90 yards. It's just, it's been embarrassing. So third and short, they're going to go with the ground game again, and he gets his head absolutely taken off, but I think he already had the first down uh, by the time his head was removed from his body. So coming in the two-minute warning here, the Rams are in the driver's seat. They have an opportunity here to really just kind of kill clock uh, and get into the end zone. There's another yellow hanky on the field, and this time it is a hold. So we finally get uh, a nice bailout here from the Zebras uh, that we get a call going our way here. I'm not going to say the refs are against us. I'm not going to say the NFL is rigged even. I won't say it, uh, but, uh, you know, just, you know. Put it in your head. Uh, so a minute 57 left to go here. The Rams are still cooking pretty deep into our territory, but it is now first and very, very long. And a major, major play up front by Takeo Spice. He just knocks over the center, uh, but still cannot make the play on Marshall Falk. 
but it's okay. He only gets about a handful. So the Rams are going to stick with the ground game as they are just trying to simply run timeout because they could easily just bring out Wilkins uh, for a field goal and uh, essentially walk us off with it. Uh, and uh, But they need to get a first down. There's still plenty of time left, and we're going to call a timeout now uh, with a minute and six left to go, and the Rams are only going to be able to do uh, this field goal that Wilkins is going to knock through. So 13 to 10 is your score now with just a minute left to go. Now we have seen what can happen with a minute. I say it every single video because that's how all these games seem to happen and Achilles Smith now taking all day to throw the pressures on it's a humongous deep ball and he finds Peter Warwick Peter Warwick has a step and he and he, he hauls it in I'm, I'm getting giddy I'm getting giddy 49 seconds left to go it is first and goal now at about the 10 yard line we're gonna hand it off to Gross the fullback who busts up the middle here shakes off a couple tackles I'm tripling on my words I'm stumbling I, I can see a Super Bowl in our future there's 10 seconds left at the very least we can tie the game but we are going for the win right here right now but Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Our OC seems to think that the best course of action is just to take this one into overtime. We could have easily ran a play and probably gotten to the end zone, uh, but it does not matter. Just a couple plays. We managed to tie the ball game. We are now in overtime with the St. Louis Rams in Super Bowl 36. Can you freaking believe it? As I said, I know how the video ends, but as you can see, I've already forgotten the course of this video. I recorded it a long time ago. But either way, the Rams are going to keep things on the ground with Marshall Falk here. We got these sudden death rules going on in overtime as well, so someone just needs to put some points on the board and things are going to be okay. Things are going to be done here. So Kurt Warner's going to find, uh, I believe it was Torrey Holt caught up in the mess there, who hauls that one in here close to the marker, uh, but uh, he doesn't quite, uh, or he does, he doesn't quite get the first down. So that's going to end the Rams drive here, and Corey Dillon's going to fumble the football in the first handoff. But fortunately, one of our big guys comes up with it, and Corey Dillon, again, just absolutely ineffective in this game. I mean, just, <laughs> just an absolute bum performance from him, uh, but we're going to hand the ball off to him again and he tries to redirect and is going the wrong direction. I don't know what is in his head, but he's absolutely selling right now. So third and nine in overtime. We need to keep this drive alive, and Achilles Smith finds the turf. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So we come up completely empty on our first drive in the overtime, and now, I mean, it really is just whoever can get points on the board, they are going to win the Super Bowl. The Lombardi Trophy is yours as Marshall Fall continues to operate here on the ground. Kurt Warner's got all the time in the world, and he pump fakes. He takes just a half second too long, and Booker gets home to him and sacks Kurt Warner for the second time today. A humongous sack. So third and very, very long yet again. The Rams still have the entire length of the field to go. Kurt Warner takes all day to throw, and he cannot connect with his receivers. That one sails into the turf. So we have another opportunity. We're going to get another opportunity with the football, and we can essentially still win this Super Bowl, baby. Can you believe it? As McGee has butterfingers, he doesn't have his hands attached to him, and he drops the ball. It's a rare drop by McGee, but he does drop it. So second and ten now. We are not going to run the ball anymore. I don't know what our OC is doing. First the end of the game decision and then the decision to run it with Corey Dillon like three times. I don't know what's happening. This time McGee does not drop the ball as he is able to haul this one in. It is one-on-one -on -one coverage. He does not have the speed to get away from his defender, but he does have uh, the hands to catch that ball and get a first down. So we're going again with Corey Dillon uh, against uh, our better judgment <laughs> who picks up, uh, I guess, a decent gain here, whatever. I'm kind of done with him at this point. I'm really frustrated. Uh, he's had a good postseason, but he's had a terrible Super Bowl. It is what it is. So second and five, Achilles Smith now finds McGee, and McGee has it in his hands but drops it again on the same drive. I think we are within uh, John Green's range or kicker's range, uh, but you want to get this one a little bit closer and burn more time if you can. Under a minute left to go here. It is third and five, and Achilles Smith finds, uh, I believe it's Ron Dugans, we haven't even called all postseason. He hasn't done a whole lot uh, for us, or uh, yeah, in these last few games. Uh, but that's going to give us a first down, and we are in prime position. And I believe we're going to use Corey Dillon to, to position our kick a little bit better. Here is all we need. Here is uh, is as a field goal to set us free. Uh, but uh, we're still going to uh, continue to run some clock, and Corey Dillon gets a, finally gets a nice gain as he runs up the middle and picks up a first down, and that is going to essentially be it uh, as we let the clock expire, and it's just, you know, it's, it's sudden death, someone has to win. You can't tie the Super Bowl, and we're not tying the Super Bowl as John Green knocks home the game-winning chip shot, uh, which is going to win us the Lombardi, the first Lombardi trophy in Cincinnati Bengals history. Can you believe it? In just two years, we managed to win a Super Bowl at the helm of the Cincinnati Bengals. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe that we just won a Super Bowl in two seasons. We were 9-7. and seven. We weren't even good. It wasn't even like a good 9-7. and seven. It was just like, a, eh, you win some, you lose some type of season. But we managed to win it, man. 
the absolute bait and switch. I forgot at the end of this game, like in the fourth quarter, that like we just went for the field goal. I mean, I guess I'm happy that like we played it safe or the CPU played it safe so that we could go to overtime. But I'm like, dude, you just got down there in two plays. Why wouldn't you just, just go for the win and just win it in regulation? But it's whatever. It works out for us. Achilles Smith has a fairly decent game uh, under center uh, for us. The completion percentage is a little bit higher than where it normally is, but uh, not a whole lot of stats to speak of. Corey Dillon has a a pretty ineffective game for us. Uh, He did score that first touchdown, but uh, Peter Warg only 86 yards here, but still no receiving touchdowns to speak of, interestingly enough. It's kind of a a ground and pound kind of Super Bowl. Uh, It has been all all game, excuse me, it was it was tough, <laughs> but this is a rematch of uh, what the COVID Super Bowl or Super Bowl the Super Bowl from 2021. What was that 50? Ah, uh, jeez, dude, I'm bad with the Super Bowl numbers. I really am. <laughs> I've had to look all these up, uh, but uh, yeah. So here's the injury report. There's Isaac Bruce. He is uh, injured, so he wasn't even in the Super Bowl. Uh, but there's your results of the Pro Bowl. The uh, NFC absolutely hammers the AFC in the Pro Bowl. So that's how that goes. I kind of thought about showing it, but I was just like, man, no, who cares about the Pro Bowl? So, uh, but yeah, year two, Super Bowl champs. That's us. Your Cincinnati Bengals are Super Bowl champions. Can you believe that? So moving on into year three here, I guess, you know, what's what's the stakes now? Is I guess just do it again, but this time do it with a little bit better of a 9-7 and seven record. <laughs> Maybe do better than that. So in the next video, we're going to go over all the stats and the offseason and all that stuff in the road ahead. So I uh, hope to see you guys there.